And in this section, this next section, we're going to talk about freeing the changed heart. Your heart has changed, no question about it, if you've received Christ as Savior, consecrated to Him, but it may not be free. What do I mean by that? That there's still something there that you know, that you cannot just move out in the Christian life the way you want with that freedom, that joy, the fruit of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Still something there. What I found out is even in our spiritual hearts, new heart, there can be heart disease, heart blockage. You know how it works in the physical heart? So many people have heart problems, right? And when their heart, the physical heart now, is not right, nothing's really right. And there can be blockage in your heart. You say, things just aren't right. What's the matter with me? I've accepted Jesus as Savior. I've consecrated my life to Him. And still, things aren't right. There's still a blockage there. And people just wonder, what, what is it? What is keeping me from being as free as I want to be and as God wants me to be? I believe in the spiritual heart there are a lot of blockages, but the three primary blockages that I've been able to identify in my own life and being a pastor for 35 years and talking with pastors and missionaries and traveling, three things have continued to surface among well-meaning, well-versed uh, believers who are serious about their faith who are serious about knowing Christ and following Him. But they say, you know, I'm still experiencing defeat. Three blockages that we'll talk about. Guilt, bitterness, and anxiety. Guilt, primarily, not exclusively, but primarily in our relationship to God. Even after conversion, people can still have those guilt feelings and they block them from having the freedom. They live under a cloud of guilt. Maybe something that happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, they still feel guilty about it. They have not resolved the issue of guilt fully. They still feel unworthy, guilty, and Satan uses that. We'll talk in detail about that. The second one is bitterness. That is a big one. That's primarily in our relationship to other people. We can be bitter towards God, but it's basically towards someone else. Because life is hard on the heart. People disappoint us, things happen. And the Bible talks about a root of bitterness that springs up. And most people don't even realize that they're bitter. We'll go in depth on that in, in a later se uh, section. But that must be dealt with. That root must be taken out if there's to be freedom. The third one is anxiety. That's primarily in relationship to ourself. That we have that internal conflict, worry, anxiety, uptight, no freedom internally. We still believe that we're in control or things are, are out of control. So if we can, and we can, by God's grace, get free of guilt and guilt feelings, totally free, and if we can get free of bitterness, totally out, that poison totally out of our system, and if we can get free of anxiety, we will have a whole new dimension to our Christian life that God wants us to have. The psalmist says, and I love this verse, it's Psalm 119, verse 32. He said, I run in the way of your commandments because you've set my heart free. Run. How many people run in the way of God's commandments? Why? They don't. Because the heart is not free. But once he frees you up, you run in the way of commandments. They're not even an issue. 
for you. Am I going to obey it or disobey it or no? You just run the way you want to do it. You want to do it because you've been set free. So I really want us to understand how to deal with these things biblically. How to get rid of guilt once and for all, and when those feelings come back, how to deal with them very quickly. How to get free of that poison of bitterness, and how to be free of anxiety. Can you imagine what would happen if we can do that? Maturity takes place, a new joy in the Christian life will take place. As powerful as the gospel of Jesus Christ is in bringing about conversion, it is important as consecration is, still after all of that, there can be blockage in our hearts that keep them troubled. And one of the primary ones is guilt and guilt feelings. So we need to become missionaries to our own hearts. Dr. David Allen said, our challenge is to become missionaries to our own hearts. So often we forget the painful feelings buried deep inside of us, anger, fear, guilt, and the experiences that led us to feel that way. The heart is a repository for those painful feelings, but like a sponge, it can only absorb so much emotion. Once it's saturated, there's little room left for love, joy, and beauty. And what are those blockages? is guilt. That is vertical. That's primary in our relationship with God. Dr. Erwin Lutzer said, I am convinced that the greatest single cause of spiritual defeat is a guilty conscience. People have asked the question, if I'm forgiven by Jesus Christ, why do I still feel so unforgiven? <coughs> I remember a number of years ago, a lady came to me that was in the process of getting a divorce. Her husband had left her for a younger woman, and she was devastated. And she wrote me a letter, and part of the letter said this. The son of my youth, having an abortion, has not gone away. I have confessed to God, I know about forgiveness, that God forgives and he forgets, but I feel such a burden of guilt. How will I justify my actions to this child when we meet in heaven? Has the guilt of this experience made me less than a mate I should have been for my husband? That lady lived with guilt and guilt feelings by the time she came to talk to me probably for 50 years. A believer, converted, gave her life to the Lord the best she knew how, but she was defeated spiritually, pressed down by guilt feelings, something that happened almost 50 years ago. How do you deal with that? How do you get free from guilt and get guilt feelings? And I want to walk you through some possible reasons while guilt feelings continue to linger, even after persons become a believer and consecrated their life to the Lord. That little heavy feeling that comes that I'm just not quite right, and I've made mistakes in the past, I've sinned, and they walk around feeling like second-class citizens and carry a load of guilt with them that keeps them from being free and enjoying the Christian life as they should. Let's talk about some of the possible reasons for guilt feelings. One, confession is not complete. Sometimes you feel guilty because you are guilty. You've never dealt with your guilt. There's true guilt and false guilt. False guilt is after you have confessed your sin and dealt with it, you still feel guilty. But true guilt is when you haven't confessed your sin. You haven't dealt with it. You haven't taken responsibility for your own actions. And God can't heal you from that guilt if we don't reveal it to him and we don't put it out in the open as we should. So confession is so very, very important. 
You can't just dismiss what you did. You can't deny it. You can't rationalize it. You can't distort it. You have to deal with it. And the way to deal with sin, any sin for a believer, is to confess it. What does confession mean? Well, there are really three components to that. Agreement with God. God, I agree with you. What I did was wrong. No excuses, no rationalization, no trying to explain it, just taking responsibility. What I did was sin. It was wrong. I agree with you. And I acknowledge what I did. This is what I did, and I name it. I've had to go through that and name that sin. Not, Lord, if I've sinned, if I've made mistakes, or I'm sorry for all my sin. No. You name it. So you acknowledge it. You agree with God that it was wrong. Then by God's grace, you say, I abandon that sin. He who conceals his sins does not prosper. But whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. So important. Proverbs 28, 13. So that's the first reason a person may feel guilty. They've never really confessed. And there is that matter of pouring out your heart before God. Empty it before God. Tell him everything. I've spent a lot of everything I can think of. And I said, Lord, bring to my mind any unconfessed sin of my life. Sometimes I know what it is. An attitude, a thought, action, whatever. Greed, envy, any of those that we've already mentioned. But name it, name it. And agree with God that it's wrong. Acknowledge that I did it, that I am a greedy person. And then say, God, by your grace, I abandon that. I renounce that. Give me the grace and the strength to put that on my life from this point on. So that clears the deck. But now after you've confessed the sin, it's, it's done. Why would you still feel guilty? Why would those guilt feelings still come? This lady said, I've confessed it over and over and over again, and I still feel guilty. And she was tormented for all those years. Well... Before we get to that completely, a second reason why guilt feelings linger is repentance is not genuine. I've touched on that on the abandonment, but what I mean is this. In repentance means a change of mind. I'm going in this direction, I turn and go that direction. There are people that confess their sin but have no thought of turning from it. I've known people that have confessed it and done it and go out and going to do the same thing all over again. Now, they have to confess and go through it, but what if a person is still hanging on to some part of that sin, not letting go, not making a clean slate, clean break with it, then repentance is not genuine. They may have regret, they may have remorse, they may have sorrow for it, but not godly repentance. They have not come to that place where they've made that clean cut break. They still make provisions for the flesh. I know people that have confessed the sin of homosexuality, for example, again and again, but they still, that's what they want to do. That's the life they want to live. There is no repentance. So repentance is very, very key. Now, a third reason why a person may still have guilt feelings. Let's assume now that they've confessed all their sin. By God's grace, they've repented. They've turned from it. They still feel guilty. What could possibly be another reason? Restitution is lacking. They've confessed, but maybe they need to make restitution. Maybe they've stolen money. It needs to be repaid. Maybe they have really trashed another person's reputation. They need to go and ask forgiveness of that person. Maybe there's some action that they need to take. Paul says in Acts 24, 16, I always strive 
to keep my conscience free of offense before God and before man. So can I look everybody in the eye and say to the extent possible, I've made everything right with them. You made it right with God, now maybe there's people you need to make it right with. I have examples of this, a man that I was in a small group with. He knew the Lord. He was consecrated, he wanted to serve the Lord. And uh, he had confessed his sins to the Lord. He had repented of it, but he still felt guilty. He said, every time I move out in the Christian life, it's just like something that pulls me back. And I don't know what, what it is. I said, well, let's talk about it. And finally, he came and he said, I know what it is. He said, when I was, uh, I was working for a man and uh, I stole from that man. I had access to the cash and I stole. I've told God, I'm sorry, I've, I'm not stealing anymore, I've confessed it, but I need to go back to him. He calculated how much he had stolen, which was a significant amount. He went back to the man and he said, you know, when I was working for you, I stole X number of dollars and I want to pay that back. I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, it was wrong, I made it right with God, I want to make it right with you. Will you forgive me? And here's the money. An amazing thing happened. The man said, I don't need your money. He said, no, you've got to take it. <laughs> he said, but I need your prayers. He said, my wife's dying of cancer. I've got all these problems. My friend then was able to share Christ with him and lead the man to the Lord. Made restitution. You need to think through. Is there anyone you owe an apology to? Anything you've taken that you shouldn't have taken, that you need to make right? Promises, vows, commitments? You have to think that one through, or that little guilt feeling will continue to ride on your shoulder. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com. Another reason, supposing now, you've confessed your sin, you've repented of your sin, you've made restitution, you still feel guilty. What could possibly be going on now? Satan can be accusing. The Bible tells us in Revelation 12, 10, that Satan is the accuser of the brethren he accuses us day and night before the throne of God. He has that way of making you feel guilty. I've done all this, but he said, do you remember what you did? Who do you think you are? That God could forgive that, what you did? And he brings that up to you. And he accuses you just in your conscience, in your mind. And you know that you have confessed it. You know that you have abandoned it. You know you've repented. You know that you've made restitution. Now you've got something else you need to do. Acknowledge that Satan is the author of those guilt feelings. And in the name of Christ, resist the devil. He will flee from you. We'll talk more about that as the lecture goes on. We'll come back to that. Here's another reason, okay? So now I know that I need to deal with Satan, put it away, and I'm in the process of doing that. But I still, once in a while, have some of these guilt feelings come up. What might that be? What might cause that? Other people who are unforgiving. That they remind you of what you did. They remind you of, of your sin. And it's easier to get God's forgiveness sometimes than man's. Some people will say, I won't forgive you after what you did, and they want to keep reminding you and bringing it up. Even after you've confessed it, you've made restitution, you've done everything you can, they don't want to be at peace with you. And they want to keep reminding you and throwing you. Who do you think you are? How can God ever use you again? I've had people say that. You know, you're done. 
you're finished. You made a mistake. You blew it. And people can be very brutal, even Christian people. And then, then some people succumb to that and say, well, I guess they're right that I really am messed up and I'm unworthy and God can't use me anymore. That's a trap. Satan uses other people. Another reason why you might have guilt feelings is there are situations that are constant reminders. For example, I know people who have gone through a divorce and they still see their other mate occasionally, their first husband or wife. And that situation, every time when people talk about divorce, that opens it up. I know people that have committed adultery and they've dealt with it, but then they're in a group and somebody starts talking about, about that sin and that situation that happened to somebody else and they did it and what a terrible thing. And that situation brings it back up. Uh, I know people that have murdered someone and they'll be reminded of that or a situation will bring it up and they remember what they did. And it's, it's very, very hard. Uh, David said, I know my transgressions. My sin is always before me. The past can't be restored sometimes and you have to leave it in the past. But there are situations that keep reminding you of it as David said, and if you don't deal with that, those guilt feelings will come. The last one that I put down, and there may be others, but try to analyze why would we have guilt feelings? We're continually realize, uh, rehearsing our failures. Again, Psalm 38, 17, and 18, David, I am about to fall and my pain is ever with me. I confess my iniquity, I'm troubled by my sin. He's continually rehearsing and he, he learned to stop that. But people do that, you know, I can't believe what I did. I can't believe the mistakes that I made. I can't believe that I sinned that way. And they rehearse, they go back. And I have people in counseling will talk to me and they want to relive it. And I say, stop. Did you deal with that sin? Did you confess it? Yes, it's done, it's under the blood. I go through all of this. It's, a, it's an amazing thing that the way that our minds tend to work is we have a great ability to forget what we want to remember. You want to remember where you put your keys you want to remember where you left your glasses, where you put your briefcase, and we forget. And the things we want to forget, we tend to remember and hang on to. And then that gives the enemy really fuel to heap guilt, guilt fillings on us. So important that we learn to, to deal with that. 